So um, we have a couple things we can kick off with here that, that we think, you know, that at least in, in other forums like this, people have been curious about. Just, uh, and then if you have uh, things, but we, we can even jump to Q&A sooner if you'd like to make sure this is flexed to where, you, where, your, where your heads are at uh, or what you want to know about. But let's just go down the road talking about perception versus reality. Uh, especially for, the, uh, for those of us, I mean, this, this you know, group on it, it goes through, uh, if, you, if you map the history back, and you, you don't even have to be too connected to it to know that it goes from being like meeting a darling to maybe meeting a devil, depending on, on the month or the, or the year sometimes. And, and what, it's, what a weird place to work at, at times, you would think optically. So I think it's interesting to hear uh, what people think once they're here. So like, if go down, like, what surprised you after joining, or what, what it knew? Whether it's what we're doing tech, on the tech side or just about the business, either you, either confirming something or debunking a myth. Yeah, cool. So, uh, so there's a couple of things for me that, that really that really come to the forefront of my mind. Uh, first of all, um, you know, I'll be honest. I, when I was looking for uh, the next place in employment, Groupon was not on my radar at all. Um, and I was talking with a friend who. Um, actually works here, and I didn't know that he worked here. Um, he had made the transition, and, and um, he said, yeah, I know a few places in Chicago that might be uh, interested to talk to. I said, okay, great, we got on the phone, and, and we were talking about uh, uh, Groupon, about uh, uh, Groupon. I'm like, dude, what's up with this Groupon? Like, why do you keep saying that? It's basically coupons in my email. Why would I care? And he said, no, you don't understand, man. It's something, it's, that's not it at all. We are all about empowering the small business and giving them a platform that they can actually you know, use to get to an audience that they've never seen before and building tools that allows them to better run their business. And you know, so yeah, well, you know, what about, I brought up some of the kind of urban legends around Groupon. Um, you know, uh, someone runs Groupon and ends up going out of business. And, you know, and, he, and he, he talked about how, you know, no, we have, we have systems in place that actually counter against that. So, um, and the more that I got talking to him, the more that I realized that there's actually a mission here that I really would, could be excited about and get behind. And so just the fact that I'm even at Groupon is probably surprise number one for me. Um, and then once I got here, uh, one of the things that I saw pretty early on was uh, a, a difference in mentality around the product. So I've been in the industry for 25 plus years. Um, built a lot of different systems, and in every place that I've worked, we talk about features, and we talk about how great this thing is going to be, and what it, you know, how awesome it's going to be once it's done. We try and fully make it in our minds before we build it. And Groupon has a real culture of experimentation, um, where you know we have an idea, it's a hypothesis, and we say, hey, listen, we think that if we do this, we're going to get good results. What's the least that we could possibly do to get something out there? Actually, prove that. And if it looks good, we'll keep building on it. If it doesn't, let's kill it right away and not you know, get enamored with our own ideas. Um, and that was surprising to me, and it was actually really refreshing. Awesome, cool, thank you. Sir, would you like to share with us? Sure, so there are no, no surprises for you? <laughs> no. When you were too early. No, I, yeah, uh, I'll go, okay, I'll, 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 uh, I wanna, sure, my surprise was this. Uh, I thought there were 30 people here, and there were actually 35. <laughs> I was shocked, I felt lied to. Uh, no, I, I, you know, I, I learned about it because another company in this building uh, launched by the same angel investors, Echo Global Logistics, the, the recruiting director there, he and I were connected on LinkedIn, this is, this is probably April, May of 2009 at the time, and he makes an update on LinkedIn that he's helping this startup company, Groupon, uh, hire people, and he does it with that pitch in his voice, which is really cool. Uh, <laughs> And, he, and um, I had heard about it because the girl I was dating at the time used Groupons and loved Groupons. That's all I knew of it. I knew that I got a decent priced Chinese meal because of my girlfriend and this website. Uh, and so when I hear that they're helping, I, I reach out to them because I was at the time, I was a contract recruiter in town at another place. And I said, hey, you know, I, what, what's going on over there? And we get to talking and we get it. The, the place was looking for their first recruiter. Uh, and it was, uh, you were figuring it out as it went. What, so what was surprising to me, and I think this is still true, I, I don't say this just because I'm an HR guy and I'm supposed to, but I feel this is a place I can be very, very, very much myself. Well, I'm the same guy when I walk in the door than when I leave. And I've worked other places where I never felt that. I felt very much like there's, a, there's a, the proverbial work pants had to go on, or the literal work pants. And to not have that feeling is awesome to me, and it's still invigorating four years later. I, I believe that I can be the same Dan here as I am at anywhere else. Maybe I use different terminology if I'm at a bar or a 
jewel. Uh, but it's the same experience. Uh, and then once things kind of got rolling to the point where the phrase, I remember this, one of our early on uh, sales leaders said, we're changing the way people buy. And like that was the first time that I remember a quote that I heard someone say in the office that got me excited. Like, wow, this is a lot more than fun, scrappy little startup. But it's actually having this momentum to kind of move, move to that. Um, I guess those things stick out for me. But. Awesome. Thank you so much for wearing your pants. Thank you. <laughs> we, have, we have guests. First time, yeah. first time in six months. <laughs> um, Groupon also was not on my radar when I was looking for next thing. And I got recruited basically on the promise of a uh, free trip to Chicago and we'll put you up for another day. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, all right, fine. Um, and then just really enjoyed the interactions I had with everyone during the interview process. And it's like, oh, I'm going to be really bummed that I don't get to see these people again, which I thought was a good indication that this is a place I should come hang out. Um, probably the things that were most surprising for me were, given the bad press, how high our merchant satisfaction and customer satisfaction are. Um, industry, I don't know, there's numbers that would be shit. I don't know. They're, they're sure. They're much better, like 85, 80? Yeah. They're, I'll send all you as a text message later with these scores. It's going to be great. Um, they're, they're actually pretty high. Um, and, and also, just the, the number of stories we hear from merchants of places that, like, um, provide those transformative things for their businesses. I feel like the press is all about, like, the one place that ran a sort of ill conceived deal and it did really poorly for them. Not really about all the places that run places, uh, deals that get them tons of new customers, which is like, what we're about. Um, so, m my background is in user facing stuff, I have a degree in human computer interactions. I'm all about like making things better for real people. And uh, I got the impression during the interview that like despite the press that is actually like forefront of everyone's mind is uh, giving merchants a great experience and giving them access to tools that you know formerly only large businesses have access to. So it was like, heck yes, I guess mean, yeah. So my experience was slightly different. So um, when I joined Groupon Groupon was everywhere. It was the name that, oh, you know, have you bought a Groupon lately? I'll say, oh, this must be a pretty big deal. So coming in, and I'd come from Google, which at the time was a bigger organization. Um, so I was expecting to see sort of processes that were well-defined, things that were structured, getting a sense of, you know, here's the scope of what you own, and you work within the bounds of it. And when I came, you know, one of the first times when I was launching a product, I said, oh, where's the product sort of launch checklist? So I want to know, did I talk to ops? Did I talk to legal? Did I talk to that? They were like, what are you talking about? I was like, maybe it's called something else, you know? I mean, the, the checklist when I'm launching, you have to make sure I've got the tick, tick, tick. They were like, no, you just make sure you talk to these people. I was like, no, but what do these people do? Like, is there a formal process? And there was none. So I think my surprise was, wow, this is much more of a startup than I thought it was, even though from scale, I had so many people, and I was probably the sixth product manager, but that again was a surprise to me, because I thought this was the big brand that it already everyone knows about, but it was such a small team, and they're trying to do big things. So then over the course of the years, we basically defined the process. We said, okay, fine, there's the checklist, and here are the people, and here are the boundaries. But uh, that was a little bit of a sort of coming into an entrepreneurial field and really truly defining things from ground up, which is pretty exciting. Cool. I think that's a, that's very true in any aspect of the of the company. In this reality of I think still today in certain pockets, where it, it has an enterprise field, it's what forty eight countries or eleven thousand people. It certainly has an enterprise field publicly uh, traded, but then it also still has a very entrepreneurial feel uh, in, in even certain channels that are still figuring themselves out and understanding uh, us as we, as we look at which channels will have uh, the, the viability we want them to have or which teams come to fruition that never existed before. I mean. A year ago, we wouldn't have talked, maybe more than a year ago, but when we started, we would never talk about things like automated merchandising, personalization. It was one deal per day in your city. It was literally the deal of the day in that city. And for it to change to that, that impacts everybody's world in such a fundamental way. But yet, doing that on a compressed time schedule, like four years, putting what, I don't know, what might, what, what might be 20 years worth of growth into four, yields a lot of awesome stuff and certainly a lot of stuff that we got to figure out, right? And stress points and everything else. I, I think the fact that we're honest to that and real about it, I think has been healthy. And the one reason that I'm still as emphatic as I am, you know, you know four years in. Uh, just because I'm curious, uh, well, again, we're happy to keep talking. I don't want this to be a group on commercial though. you guys want that. Are there people, other questions right away that we, we want to go to, even whether it's based on what we just said or stuff that you were wondering walking in the door? We're happy to keep going on this list here, but I want to make sure I turn to that. 
you would be brave enough to answer, ask the first question. Just pick one. Yes, yes. Cool, awesome, thank you. So just in case you didn't catch it in the back, uh, recruitment strategy, specifically around technology, you know, in, in markets where there is maybe 1% or even fewer, uh, or lower than that, uh, unemployment for, for certain technologists, what are we doing to attract, what are we doing to retain? Like one thing, uh, and I'm sure there are several things that contribute to that, but we've gotten a lot more specialized in our teams as we've grown. I mean, what, 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 uh, what once was one recruiter doing all the Groupon stuff, they get in was eventually one tech recruiter, and then dedicated tech recruiting teams, and then we have teams dedicated to our offices, right? Whether it's Chicago, Seattle, Palo Alto, San Francisco, and, and then internationally as well. It helps to attack uh, 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 them. But when it comes down to things like retaining the true like, employer brand and how to attract that, I, I, I think about things, I'll let you guys speak to this uh, on the tech side, I think about things like geek fests that we do and certain things that kind of that still ring true to a, to a tech community, as well as internally looking at things like, well, if we need to, to you, we didn't expect to be as big as we were so soon, but we are that big, so what do we have to rush in, in terms of succession planning or talent development that all of a sudden you, you, you're, you're, bigger, you're, you're big enough, you need to have that, and you kind of wake up and do it, so we implement some of those functions like that and, we can talk in more depth if you want on how we're starting to structure those things. But I think if you want to focus on specifically, specifically around tech and how do we keep this place attractive to engineers, to product talent, to designers, uh, the things that you see in our office uh, or even how, the way we operate, uh, especially amidst scale, uh, and then also what you see, how this still has maybe a sense of a, of a tech community, which to me, I think, begets that attractiveness. Who's feeling that? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, from a, from a, I can't speak to the sourcing uh, really well. Uh, I know that from a, you know, from a brand standpoint, right, they, you mentioned uh, Geek Fest, and for those of you that don't know that is, um, everyone's welcome to it. Uh, every Tuesday, uh, we have speakers uh, on uh, various technical topics. Um, they're not always uh, Groupon speakers, but lots of times we bring in other folks from the Chicago community. Um, anything from, you know, uh, you know, what's happening in, in closure to, maybe some gem that someone has actually put together to, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, there was a talk on, um, uh, on uh, bipolar disorder and mental illnesses within our community and the impact that those have and you know the sensitivities we need to have around those. So, so GeekFest has a, a very wide uh, variety of talks that, that, that happen. That's every Tuesday, everyone's welcome. Um, you know, internally, uh, we, have, we have GeekOn, um, which is uh, basically a hack week. Um, where all of engineering uh, gets together and creates ad hoc teams and can work on pretty much whatever we think would be cool. Uh, as long as you can kind of squint and see some sort of connection to Groupon, then that's good enough for us, right? Um, and there's been some really cool things that have come out of that already. Um, we've got some internal tools that we actually use in engineering that we built ourselves that came out of that. A team of you know, three or four people got together and said, wouldn't it be cool if, and by the end of the week, yes, it was cool. Um, you know, I think uh, another thing that's, that's, that's happening as we, as we put these teams together, um, you know, we've gone through a couple of different uh, iterations on, on uh, how we approach product, but today what we've got is um, each team is really very responsible for a particular area of, of the site or the application or you know, to what they're building for our end customers. Um, and they've got a lot of influence, not just in what does it look like, but actually what are the features that are going to, that are going to be built and, and how is this, this thing going to actually work. Um, and those teams have oftentimes direct line of connectivity to very senior leadership. It feels very flat. So everyone's got influence. 